So in today's video, we will see the different examples of 1G, 2G, 3G and 4G wireless communication system. The example of your 1G is your uh, AMPS system. AMPS stands for Advanced Mobile Phone System. Okay. So the figure shows the frequency bands used in your AMPS system. So you know that there are two channels, right? One is your forward control channel and the second one is your reverse control channel. So what is meant by forward control channel? You have the transmission from your base station. Communication from your base station to your mobile station is called as forward communication, sorry, forward control channel and the transmission from your mobile station to the base station will be your reverse control channel. So uh, the frequency range uh, 869 to 894 megahertz is allotted for your forward control channel and 824 to 849 megahertz is allotted for your reverse control channel okay and this each this 869 to 894 megahertz and 824 uh, to 849 which will when you subtract you will be getting a range of 25 megahertz this 25 megahertz band will be divided equally into 30 kilohertz uh, range by using your FDMA technology. So it uses AMPS uses FDMA technology. Okay. So FDMA stands for frequency division multiple access. So you know that this is your uh, diagram for your FDMA uh, used in your AMPS system. So you know that you have your uh, modulation. What is the modulation used here? It is frequency modulation and your FSK. So totally it will have uh, 832 channels. That is 416 pair per carrier and 21 among that among for 416 per carrier you have 21 uh, control channels. 21 channels are used as your control channels. Okay. So the total channel is equal to 832. Okay. So the figure shows the first two uh, channels is your uh, used for your control channels which uses the FSK technology frequency shift keying and the other one is other all the other the three kilohertz signal that is your low frequency signal will be converted into a high frequency signal which is in the range of 30 kilohertz by means of your frequency modulation that is for your voice signals okay so these 30 kilohertz is what it it may be the the frequency range will be distributed between your uh, 869 to 894 or 824 to 849 depending on whether it is a forward control channel or whether it is a reverse control channel okay so these are the important points in your advanced mobile phone system and some of the disadvantage is it has low capacity, it has, it, is, uh, it has unreliable handoff, it has poor voice links and no security. Okay. So moving on to the second generation that is your 2G systems. Okay. The two important um, examples are one is your DAMPS which stands for a digital AMPS system and the Next one is your GSM system. So your DAMPS system is the digital version of your previous system that is your analog system, analog AMPS system and it is uh, backward compatible with that of your AMPS system. It can be used along with the AMPS system. Okay, it uses the same channels as that of your AMPS system and one of the main feature of this uh, DAMPS system is that dividing the uh, 30 kilohertz channel pair into three time slots and digitally compressing the voice data so that it can yield three times the call capacity okay so each time slot where is this uh, it has a, a transmission bitrate of a 48.6 kilobits per second and each time slot will carry uh, 324 bits these are some of the important points of your digital AMPS system Moving on to the main uh, 2G system example, which is nothing but your global system for mobile, which is called as GSM. So in general, the frame structure of the GSM is divided into hyper frame, super frame, multi frame and frame. Okay. So one multi frame is formed by a combination of 26 frames. Among this 20, 26 frames, 24 is traffic frames and two is allotted for your control frames. So this category is called as your traffic multi-frame, okay. So this is your diagram of your multi-frame which consists of 26 different frames. So this is your first frame, 2, 3, 4, etc. up till 26th frame, okay. With a time duration of 120 millisecond. Now a single frame 
consists of eight different slots one two three four five six seven eight and each slots will have 156.25 bits okay so this is your structure of your gsm architecture the gsm architecture mainly consists of four different subsets subsystems first one is your mobile station subsystem second one is your base station subsystem third one is your network subsystem and the fourth one is your OMSS that is your operation and maintenance subsystem okay so the first subsystem that is your mobile station subsystem consists of both your SIM as well as your ME so what is meant by SIM SIM is nothing but your subscriber identity module and ME is nothing but your mobile equipment mobile equipment is your handset okay so this mobile equipment can be a portable or vehicle mounted or handheld device okay and this mobile equipment will consist of your IMEI number international mobile equipment identity number and monitors the power and signal quality so that is a function of your uh, ME that is your mobile equipment and the second one is your subscriber identity module you know that it is a small smart card that contain your IMSI number that is international mobile subscriber identity number okay so it allows the user to send and receive the calls and contains the encoded network identification details so this is your function of both your sim and mo your mobile equipment so mobile equipment can uh, can get the calls and can talk and receive only if a sim is uh, connected to it okay so the mobile station is uh, connected to the next stage that is called as your base station subsystem so it communicates with that of your base station subsystem by means of an interface that is called as your radio or air interface or um interface okay now this mobile a base station subsystem mainly consists of two uh, uh, parts one is your bts bts stands for base trans transceiver station and bse is nothing but your base station control okay uh, base station controller so this base station controller we can one base station controller can control more than one BTS. Many number of BTS can be connected. Okay. So now what is the function of BTS? BTS uh, does the function such as encoding, encryption, multiplexing, modulation and feeds the RF signal to the antenna. So these are the function, different functions of your BTS. So now what is the function of your uh, base station controller? Each base station controller will control uh, more than one BTS right within that area. So what it does this base station controller will, uh, will uh, manage all the radio resources for your BTS such as it assigns the frequency and time slots for all the mobile station in its area and it uh, also uh, handles all the call cell setup. So these are the functions or main functions of your uh, base station controller which communicates between your mobile station and your mobile switching center okay now the next section now this bsc will be uh, communicating with your mobile uh, switching center by means of an interface that is called as your a interface whereas i forgot to tell here the interface between your base uh, transceiver uh, station and your base station controller is the interface that is called as abyss interface okay so what is meant by msc uh, msc is nothing but your mobile switching center right so this block comes under the uh, what uh, um, system what subsystem network network subsystem right so this network switching subsystem does the switching functions and allows the msc to communicate with the other networks such as your pstn isdn etc okay so, so this uh, nss mainly consists of uh, three uh, parts one is your msc which is nothing but your mobile switching center which is the heart of the network okay so what are the functions of your uh, msc msc manages the communication between your gsm and your other networks such as pstn isbn etc then it uh, does the call setup function routing basing switching function then it does the mobility management uh, including uh, what handoff uh, registration location updating right uh, it does also the inter base station um, and inter uh, MSC call handoff. Uh, then uh, it will function as a gateway while in the roaming condition. All uh, main activities are done by your mobile switching center. That's why it's called as your heart of the network. Okay. 
so you have two other parts one is called as your hlr and the other one is your vlr so hlr is called as home location register and your vlr is called as visitor location register okay so a register the name itself signifies that both are databases okay so this H hlr or your uh, home location register is a database that contains the information about the mobile subscriber in, la in the large service area okay it consists of your imsi number imsi isdn number it uh, also keeps track of your roaming restrictions supplementary services etc what about your vlr vlr is nothing but visitor location register it is also a database but it is a temporary database which updates whenever your new mobile station enters its area by your hlr database okay it controls the uh, roaming okay visitor location uh, register then it consists of again your um, imsi number tmsi number uh, msrn and location uh, um, update everything will be done by your visitor location register okay the last subsystem is nothing but your operation and maintenance subsystem so this operation and maintenance subsystem is mainly uh, formed by means of your two parts that is your EAR and your AUC. AUC is nothing but your authentication center and EAR is nothing but your equipment identity register. Okay. So this authentication center provides a protection against any intruders in the air interface and again it maintains the authentication keys and algorithms etc. So what is the function of your EAR? EAR provides the mobile station information used by the by the mobile switching center and it also maintains a list of uh, fraudulent or faulty uh, mobile stations these are the functions of your ear and your authentication center finally your msc will be uh, communicating with your other uh, networks by means of an interface that is your uh, ss7 interface these are the overall uh, structure of your uh, gsm architecture okay so next the example of your 3G generation, uh, third generation is nothing but your UMTS and CDMA 2000 and your example for your 4G is your LTE system that is called as long term evolution. Okay, so what is the change in your uh, 3G that is your UMTS system or it is called as your UTRAN system architecture. So uh, UTRAN uh, so what is the difference between the previous system is that the mobile station will be replaced by your user equipment whereas your node B will be equivalent to your base transceiver station BTS and your RNC will be equivalent to that of your base station controller BSC right and uh, your uh, here it is divided into two parts so this part is called as your UTRAN so UTRAN stands for UMTS terrestrial radio access uh, network and um, the core network so your network subsystem will be divided it will be converted into a core network so this is your um, difference in your uh, 3g network so what is the other dif main difference you have the data and the voice will be uh, separated that is if you have voice call it will be uh, through rnc it will reaches the msc and here it reaches your pstn and voice and internet is separated data is uh, separated so for uh, a voice you have IUCS that is circuit switched uh, network uh, interface and for in the case of data you have IU packet switched interface. Okay so this is the major change in your uh, UMTS uh, system whereas the improvisation of this GSM and uh, that is 2G and 3G led to your LTE system. So what is your LTE system architecture this is this comes for 4G okay. So LTE system architecture. Uh, it is called as long term evolution so what is the difference between your uh, 3g and 4g so the difference between your 3g and 4g is that it is uh, this utran uh, uh, section will be replaced by your uh, evolved e utran okay so e utran it is called as e stands for evolved where your node b and rnc is combined together so there is no uh, central controller it is uh, uh, combined together into your E node B. E node B is called as evolved node B. Okay. And now what is the difference here in the next section that is your 
core network in this case will be converted into your epc that is your evolved packet core because here both the voice and the data are combined together by the internet there is no uh, separation all is uh, by means of your ip all the different uh, designations are given in the site okay so these are the different examples of your uh, 1g 2g 3g and 4g technology